Hi, everyone. Welcome to Pack Your Nursing Minutes. First off, I would just like to thank everybody for tuning into my channel. In the last month, I've received over 100 subscribers. And I just want to say thank you because without you tuning in, there would not be a channel. I am just so thankful for your interest, for helping my passion turn into a reality for educating uh, the nurses in the perianesthesia world. Now let's talk about pain management. This is the number one complication that we experience with our patients in the recovery room. And the number one thing that is on their minds when they are going to surgery is, what is it gonna feel like when I wake up? So this second video is going to focus on the pathophysiology of pain. Now I just wanna remind everybody, I'm gonna to try to keep these videos to 10 minutes. So this is really going to be like the cliff notes on pain management for PACU. So I recommend that you delve a little deeper. I also recommend that if you're not a member of ASPAN, become a member of ASPAN, and then you'll receive their journal. There is usually in every volume a topic that revolves around pain management. Now let's get to it. What is pain? The definition of pain is what the patient says it is and when they say it is. And there are three types of pain that uh, we need to understand. And the first type is nociceptive pain. So this is normal pain. This is when you've cut your hand, when you're you know, slicing up cucumbers for a salad and you feel that surge, that, uh, that sting or that burn from the cut. And that is the normal pathway that your body is processing um, those nerve messages from the tissue damage from the injury of the cut. So, and there are um, two kinds. There is the somatic, which is like your skin, bone, muscle. And then there is the visceral, which is like the organ. Uh, they have pain receptors on, around your organs, especially in the GI tract. So like if you have appendicitis or pancreatitis or um, you have a kidney infection, uh, you are gonna feel that visceral pain from all of those um, neurotoxins from the infection that are building up and then triggering that visceral pain. And then we have neuropathic pain. This is our second type of pain. And this is where there is some kind of damage between the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system where that pain pathway is not processed properly. And you will see this with your patients who have diabetic neuropathy, usually ongoing, it can be chronic. And again, it's, it's an abnormal pathway, the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. And then thirdly, we have mixed pain, which is a mixture of um, nociceptive and neuropathic. And a good example of that is um, a below the knee amputation patient. They have, you know, just had surgery. So they have the nociceptive pathway that's been triggered, neuropathic pathway that's been triggered because now we have an abnormal process between those peripheral nerves and the central nervous system. But this is also seen in like your fibromyalgia patients, your PTSD patients, um, Lyme disease can be considered mixed as well. So it's good to understand the pathway of the process of pain. I am a visual person. And so I just really get it when I can draw a picture and then understand. So this is a diagram of all of your spinal nerves and then your cord and then your brain. The nociceptive input, we're gonna use an example of a patient who is um, having a uh, total knee replacement. So surgically, we are going to induce a nociceptive input stimulus to those peripheral nerves when the surgeon cuts. This is going to immediately release an inflammatory response of serotonin, bradykinins, histamine, substance P, and prostaglandins. And those are all really important to understand these stress responses to the nociceptive input. When the patient uh, is on that OR table and the surgeon begins to do the operation, those afferent neurons are going to be immediately stimulated, uh, triggering all of those nociceptive uh, receptors within the peripheral nervous system. That is then going to be transmitted up through the delta fibers and the C fibers. These are nerve pathways 
to send messages to dorsal root ganglia, and then it will form one nerve that will then enter into dorsal horn of the spinal cord. And then the message will be sent up the um, spinothalamic tract to the brain. So this is our afferent pathway and how our brain processes pain. Um, then we will experience a perception of pain. You will feel and sense and experience um, pain. And that's through the perception of the thalamus of the sensory cortex of the brain. And we are still understanding pain pathways centrally within the brain. Um, there have been uh, research looking at MRIs and um, brain mapping studies to better understand this. But just know that the perception process happens in the cortex of the brain. Then your brain will send out efferent pathways down the spinal cord. And there's two mechanisms that will be triggered here. One is the um, modulation mechanism. And this is like a, a chemical receptor response. And this chemical receptor response is going to be blocking all of that inflammatory soup that is happening. The dorsal horn of the spinal cord has many opioid receptors. Um, your body will make endogenous opioid and then saturate those receptors so that the experience of pain is dulled, especially when you're in that fight or flight response. That's why, um, you know, you could be, if you're out, you know, trail running or something and you fall and um, you, uh, you know, take a big fall and now you realize you have to somehow figure out how to get out of here. Um, you may not totally realize the extent of your injury until you have gotten out of danger because you have that release of endorphins to do that fight to help you get out of the situation that you're in. And then once you've calmed down and those uh, endorphins have settled, then you kind of take in the inventory of all of your injuries and you realize that you may be way off than what you originally thought. But that is because that endogenous opioid was released by the brain uh, in saturating those opioid receptors at that spinal cord level. And, um, and then as well, there's serotonin, there's norepinephrine that also add into all of this uh, to help us manage pain immediately. And then there's the reflex arc of those efferent pathways, which is your immediate pullback or withdrawal um, from that noxious stimuli that is causing that nociceptive pain. So like when you're, let's take the example back to when you are cutting that cucumber at your salad. If you cut your finger, you're gonna immediately, um, you know, withdraw um, your finger from that knife. And that is our, our beautiful response between the peripheral and the central nervous system um, and having that efferent pathway to trigger that muscle motor reflex response to protect us from further injury. So it's a very complex pathway, and I know that I am giving you cliff notes right now on that pathway, but just remember that there's uh, transduction, which is that immediate injury, um, and then the transmission of the pain from the peripheral to the central nervous system, the perception of the pain at the central nervous system level in the cortex of the brain, and then the modulation and the reflex arc. The modulation is the like chemical receptors um, blocking that opioid sensation, saturating those opioid receptors, and then um, the reflex arc of the motor movement of being able to withdraw from that noxious stimulus. Now that we've understand the pathophysiology of the pain, now we need to consider what type of pain is it? Is it an acute pain or is it a chronic pain? Our population is PACU. Uh, so this is going to be an acute pain. When the patient wakes up, they're going to immediately feel a, a, a level of pain from those nociceptive receptors that just have been triggered from the surgery. They can also have chronic pain that's been ongoing. Maybe they have a lumbar injury on top of maybe having their gallbladder out. So these are all things that you need to um, assess and be aware of and considering when you are thinking about the pain management plan for each individual uh, patient. So this sums up the second video on pain management where we've gone over the pathophysiology. Stay tuned next for assessment, pain scales, and severity of pain. If you feel that I've given you value added, please like, please share, ring the bell and subscribe. As always, follow your hospital's policy and procedures, your nurse practice acts, 
and your physician's orders. This channel is for knowledge sharing and entertainment purposes. If you enjoy it, please support me by sharing it.